partnership with God. Now, at first glance, that just seems wrong. I mean, God is all-powerful, all-knowing, gracious, loving God of the universe. And the idea that we would be partners with God just doesn't seem right. But is that idea really that crazy? So I was recently talking to a very long-time friend, Doug, who is a mature ministry leader. And we both come from similar positions. The idea that, to a degree, we are actually called to be partners with God. That's to live out our calling, our purpose, our function, requires us stepping into that partnership role. But, but let's clarify. That, that partnership role does not make us equal with the all-powerful God. But recognize partnerships require each partner to play their role, to fulfill their function. That they each have a role to play. But it doesn't mean that partners are automatically equal. God is clearly the senior partner. But, but what partnerships do is they highlight the fact that each partner has a role and a responsibility to play. And why this is important is so often because we do serve a all-powerful, all-knowing God of the universe, spoke everything into being, we can slide into this very passive faith mindset. In fact, I call it fairy tale faith, this idea that we just have faith and God does amazing, that we're just waiting on God to move. Now, there is a waiting aspect, which we'll come back to, but it's the recognition that from the very beginning, God's plan was that we would have a role and a responsibility in the kingdom. From the very beginning, Genesis 1, when God said, let us make man in our image and let him have dominion. Now, so often that has been misconstrued as some kind of lordship and ruling. When a better way to look at it is dominion is responsibility. In other words, God delegated the responsibility for all of creation to man. That was his original plan. And he backed it up with all the required authority to fulfill. And part of bringing the kingdom is God restoring glimpses of that original plan. And that it, what it means is us beginning to understand how that relationship works. Not just that we are called into a relationship with this loving, amazing God, but out of that re relationship flows purpose and responsibility that we would truly be His representatives here on earth bringing the kingdom of God. But, but in a practical sense, what does that mean? What does partnership really mean? And a great example of that is in Psalm 37, verse 9. And it says, Those who wait on the Lord will inherit the earth. Now, first glance, that reinforces that very passive concept that we just wait upon God and in inheriting, He will just give us the earth. He'll give us the land. He'll give us the good things. And while God does give it to us, it's how He gives it, the process of giving it to us is where we need to grow in our understanding and our maturity that we would have a greater impact. Because that verse actually means that those who wait upon the Lord, when it says they will inherit the earth, that word inherit is not that we would just receive it with our hands out, but it's an aggressive verb meaning to possess. But again, it goes back full circle to the relationship that we don't wait upon the Lord and just go aggressively possess the good things He has for us, but that rather we possess Him out of relationship with Him, and by direction from Him, but with the recognition that it's our responsibility to actually go seize it, to possess it. Uh, you know, another good example, and you know, we hear this so much, but when I was young, the, the hot thing going around Christianity is that the wealth of the wicked was stored up for the righteous, which comes from Proverbs 13. And it's an amazing promise. And again, it comes from that sense of, Oh, that one of these days, God's just going to take it from them and give it to us. But is that really what God's intention is? Now, originally, we saw that happen in Egypt. That is, God's people came out of Egypt. They came out of their bondage. They went out in complete health, with wealth, with great rejoicing. 
But if you really look at it, what happened? God specifically, he had moved on the hearts of the Egyptian. He, believe it or not, in spite of all of the hardship, he had given his people favor with the Egyptians. And he told them to ask for gifts. That they went out with this great wealth by responding to his instruction. And so likewise, while that promise in Proverbs 13 is still valid today, it's a requirement and a reiteration that all of it flows strictly out of relationship with God, that separate from Him, we have no power, we have no authority, we have no ability. Anything we can accomplish in our strength separate from God's leading and empowerment is really an illusion. But it's also the understanding that we aren't to wait passively for God, that while we do wait, we wait with an expectation, we, we wait with that seeking direction, and then when God shows us, when He gives us revelation, when He gives us a glimpse, when He gives us direction, that is then our role to take that responsibility and move forward with it. Which highlights again, the big challenge so often is that so many are powerless because they, like children, are just waiting for God to do it. Rather than, as God said to Moses at the Red Sea, why are you crying to me? You raise your staff, you part the Red Sea. Now, obviously, it was Moses' action, but then God backed that action up with an east wind that parted the Red Sea. It was a great demonstration of the partnership at work. And when we do it right, God is actually glorified. The kingdom, that, that restoration, that glimpse of God's ideal kingdom is for a moment restored. Lives are transformed. But more importantly, we grow in our maturity. We begin to increase in our likeness that we were created to be in His likeness. We increase, we grow in that. So from that context, is partnership with God really such a crazy idea? Or is it really something that He calls us to and we achieve it by the power of application of His direction? 